All right, this is fourth grade, module five, lesson 16. And in this lesson, students are gonna be using visual models to add and subtract fractions with the same unit. So some of the visual models that students are gonna be using, they're gonna be using the area model. They're gonna be using a number line. And they're also gonna be using the concept of units. So uh, where we might say two apples plus three apples equals five apples. In this case, we're also going to be using uh, units. So like two sevenths plus three sevenths equals five sevenths in that unit um, model as well. So let's get started. So here we're using the units model because you'll see instead of um, everything being written as fractions, you'll see they're written as the units. For example, three fourths is three fourths and then this says two fourths, so it's three-fourths minus two-fourths. But at this point, parents and teachers, we don't really need our students thinking about this. We want them thinking about the labels. So three-fourths minus two-fourths is one-fourth. And that's how you're going to write it. If your students are high flyers and they want to write it as a fraction like that, they're perfectly welcome to. But at this point, we're really looking for answers in a, written in word form, one-fourth, with a label like that. Now we're moving to uh, the next step in terms of the scaffolding is now they no longer specifically say the labels. Now we're supposed to read the denominators as our labels. So up here, three-fifths minus two-fifths is one-fifth. And this is where we're going to be showing our students that the numerators we subtract, but our denominators stay the same because that is kind of like our label. Uh, we don't do 5 minus 5 and put 0 down here because the 5 stands as our labels. 3 fifths minus 2 fifths equals 1 fifth. And then one last one, oh, we can we could do down here. Um, 7 fourths minus 5 fourths is 2 fourths. And at this point, parents and teachers, we do not need our students to simplify, but if they want to, they're certainly welcome to and say, oh, look at that, two-fourths divided by two on the top and two on the bottom gives us one-fourth, uh, whoa, one-half, and they're allowed to do that. Uh, it, at this point, it's not mandatory. So here we're still subtracting, but at this point we're going to take our answer, which looks like it's always going to be an improper fraction or a fraction greater than one, and we're going to rewrite it as a mixed number. Uh, the idea I use in the word improper, um, that's kind of old school uh, to, to indicate that the numerator is larger than the denominator. Um, in Common Core, I don't think we call it improper anymore. We just say it's a fraction greater than one. Uh, but there's nothing inherently wrong with calling it an improper fraction. So let's take a look at problem C. So we've got, let's see, we've got nine fifths minus three fifths. So that equals six fifths. And the idea is we want students to recognize six fifths as being five fifths plus one fifth. And we know that this right here is equal to one whole. So six fifths is equal to one whole and one fifth left over. And if we wanted to do D, 11 fourths minus six fourths, well, that's equal to what? Five fourths. And so we can see that that's four fourths plus one fourth. And so that's equal to one and one fourth. So here we're returning to the uh, units model again because now we're adding rather than subtracting. So 4 fifths plus 2 fifths in this case is equal to 6 fifths and we can leave it at that. We don't have to change it into a, a mixed number at this, mo at, at this point. And then down here uh, 3 elevenths plus 6 elevenths is equal to 9 elevenths because we're looking at those elevenths as labels like fifths or like eighths. All right, so here we're going to continue adding, but now we're going to get an answer that seems to be a fraction larger than one, so we want to decompose our fraction and write it as a mixed number. So, for example, here's three-fourths plus three-fourths, that's six-fourths, 
and we know 6 fourths is 4 fourths plus 2 fourths, so our answer is 1 and 2 fourths. At this point, we don't have to turn that into 1 and a half. Uh, parents and teachers, if you want to help your kids with that, you can. But it's really, not, at this point, we're not, we don't want to mark that question wrong. Uh, we're perfectly happy with this unsimplified answer. We would not, we were not happy with ending with six fourths because the whole intention of this problem was to take that improper fraction and turn it into a mixed number. But one and two fourths is perfectly fine. Oh, let's do, um, let's do five eighths plus seven eighths. So five eighths plus 7 eighths, well that's clearly 12 eighths, and 12 eighths, whoa, is 8 eighths plus 4 eighths, so that's 1 and 4 eighths, and ideally we might have our students also recognize that as 1 and a half. In our last slide for this video, we're going to continue making things, you know, difficult. Um, now we're mixing some subtraction and some addition, only this time we want to use the number line to model our answer. Now parents and teachers, at this point you might be saying, well why are we going to add the number line when our students have been getting the answer just fine um, prior to this? Well, that's because the number line is really going to help our students um, later, particularly in fifth grade, uh, when they're adding and subtracting fractions that do not have common denominators. So in fourth grade, we want to introduce the concept of number lines. So 11 ninths, let's say, just lives right here, and then minus 5 ninths. So the idea is we're going to subtract 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 ninths. So there's 1 ninth, 1 ninth, 1 ninth, 1 ninth, one ninth, and we've subtracted uh, five ninths. And where are we going to end up? Well, we're going to end up at six ninths. And if we wanted to, we can kind of count backwards. We could start at eleven, and we can eleven ninths, and go ten ninths, eight uh, nine ninths, eight ninths, seven ninths, six ninths. So ten nine eight seven six. Ninths. Um, or it might be better to think of it as an addition problem. You might think of it as 5 ninths plus what gives us 11 ninths. And of course that answer is 6 ninths. But the idea is we do want to label or record this on a number line to give our students the concept of uh, number lines, which are going to be super important down the road. So let's start with 13 twelfths. We're going to go up four. One, two, three, four twelfths. So that's going to be, let's see, 14 twelfths, 15 twelfths, 16 twelfths, 17 twelfths. 15, 16, 17, yeah. 17 twelfths. And that's equal to one and five twelfths. Parents and teachers, at this point, you might want to see if your students can take this number and convert it into a mixed number in their head without decomposing. Uh, maybe they can decompose in their head. Um, that's just a fun game for them to try. And that wraps up fourth grade module five, lesson 16, where we're using visual models to add and subtract fractions.